Hey, Beer Geeks, Happy New Year! 2020, mate, it's futuristic as f. I've got a really, really good feeling about this year because of all the amazing beer that we have, not because of any of the other nonsense that's going on in the world. Uh, last year we had an amazing, amazing video based on what's going to be big in 2019. We got yeah. some right, we got some wrong. Yeah. But more importantly, all the beers we tried were fantastic. And this year I'm hoping we're going to have the same because we've got five very, very, very exciting breweries to talk about. Quite different looking as well. Yeah, and some bottles, which is refreshing. <laughs> Last year, I think it was all yeah. cans. Yeah, that's nice um, to see. Yeah, so bear in mind, these are British breweries. We would love to know who you think is going to have a breakout year in your country, wherever you are in the world. So comments down below. Uh, and we've also got some guys that didn't quite make the cut who we'll give a shout out to at the end. But let's get stuck in. All right. So like all good nights, we're going to start with an IPA. Uh, yeah, kill the taste buds straight off the bat. Exactly. Well, this is the this is the smallest beer we have, <laughs> flavour-wise. That's good to know. Uh, yeah, it's a West Coast IPA. So we're going big in 2020. Exactly. There's the name of the video. So Double Barrel have actually been around for a little while now, um, but they, they took some time to find their feet. Uh, they seem to be in construction for a long old time, uh, and they've just started hitting their stride, which is why we're putting them in this year. Um, and I think some of their IPAs are some of the best I've tasted, particularly on the West Coast side, which we're about hmm. to try here. So this is Nothing Ever Happened, Not Even This. Uh, it's a Comet and Equinot 6.6% West Coaster. It's very um, philosophical mm. sounding. Doesn't that just smell like being on the West Coast? It's great. It smells smooth. It's bringing back 2017. 2017? Is that when we went to the States? I have no idea. 16, 17? 16, I think. Oh, it does smell it's great. Lovely pine, Piney. marmalade, mm. caramel. Yeah. I love all this mango and stuff. stuff. Yeah. It's, it. it's still, although I love New England IPAs, I'm still a West Coast guy at home. Mm. Yeah, it's very drinkable. It's bright, it's dry, yeah. it's zingy and piney. Mm. Tiny bit of grapefruit bitterness at the finish. Yeah. So you associate West Coast IPAs with Citra, yeah. Chinook. Mm. Cascade to some extent, those sort of older school uh, sea hops. It's nice to see Equinot in there, which I think is giving it just a little hint of juice, a little thing that New England IPA lovers will recognise. Maybe I'd want a little hint more bitterness, but I think for the way that everyone's palate is these days, it's bang on. Yeah, it kind of feels like they've maybe sort of tried to tone the bitterness down or something in a way. <laughs> yeah, I think they probably have just recognised that most people are drinking New England IPAs these days, which are Different around about palettes. 35, 40 yeah. IBU, and this is probably around 55-ish. So, I mean, uh, from that way as well, you could say you could go back from drinking a New England style, quite happily drink one of those. Quite happily to this. Wouldn't be a shock yeah. to the system. Yeah. But this one is, yeah, in terms of bitterness, right in between the coasts. Yeah. And really, really nice for it. They've not unleashed both barrels of bitterness there. But it's certainly a full guns blazing effort. I should have quit while you're ahead. Uh, right, so the next one we're going to go for is Pastore. So this is a mixed fermentation IPA. So they've used Kvike yeast. So that's the Norwegian farmhouse yeast that ferments out in like three days. We know all about that stuff. Yeah, uh, we went to Norway and talked about it. So there'll be a video at the end of this. Uh, and then Lactobacillus, which is a souring bacteria. And then Eldorado and Rakao Dry Hop. Whoa. So we're, it's going to be a juicy, sour yeah. bad boy. Um, these guys are a father and son team. They're from oh, near Cambridge. Uh, and they make only mixed firm beers. They've got like their fresh ones, which are like stainless steel, fermented with Lactobacillus and different yeasts. And then they've got their barrel age series. Yeah, I mean, that smells like tropical fruit juice. Yeah, it's pretty, um, well, juicy. Yeah. <laughs> But really, I mean, yeah, fermented juice. Umbongo-y. Yeah. I feel like I'm, I'm walking through a field of, uh, yeah, tropical fruits that have fallen on the floor and are Got slowly a mushy. rotting. Yeah. But fermenting as they go. But in a pleasant way. In a right? sexy way. In a sexy. That didn't, sexy sound, se that didn't sound sexy to you. <laughs> That's lovely. I'm not a huge fan of sour IPAs. Mm. I think IPAs should be bitter. Mm. Um, and so I always worry when I have sour IPAs, I think that's distracting. But that's really restrained sourness. It really is a fruity tartness, like like an orange juice tang. It's doing, it's going, it's making me make dolphin he's, noises he's dolphin going in. around. He's dolphining. Yeah, it's really mellow, but really, really juicy. Sorry, really mellow finish, but really juicy up front. Mm. No bitterness at all, really. It's just that dry hop that's giving it extra juicy notes. I can't, I can't believe there's no fruit in that, basically. Something about it is making me feel slightly salty. I think it's sherbet. 
Is that what it is? It's that zinginess. I think it's that lemony lacto thing so that's zingy. making it kind of fizz on your tongue. Yeah. Not so much salty, but sherbetty. Yeah, I can't say I can taste salt, but I'm just getting that kind of like bit of shock. Yeah. It's great. I think, yeah, beautifully balanced beer. It really is. Really complex, mm. uh, but refreshing at the same time, which is what all beer should be. Complex, but endlessly pluggable. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a yes from me. This is Winter on Mars. I like the name by of this the guys. brewery St. Mars of the Desert. Best brewery name of 2020. Amen. For sure. Um, and these guys, uh, they're based in Sheffield, mm. which is becoming the home of some really good. Well, it's always been a great cask brewing city. Yeah. And it's now getting some really great modern guys. Uh, Abbey Dale have really modernised. Got mm. their, they call it the Funk Dungeon. They've got now the Funky Dungeon. The fu funk Dungeon sounds like a terrible disco. So this is a really unusual beer. Uh, the story of these guys is really unusual. They had a brewery uh, over in in Boston, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. which they closed up and decided to just move elsewhere. They just wanted to move on, and so they moved Sheffield. to Sheffield. Oh, that's a tale as old as time, Johnny. <laughs> From America to Sheffield. Right. So mixed fermentation dark Furder beer, Furder Fooder, Fooder. However you want to pronounce it. Uh, brewed with Colombian panela sugar. I do like their crazy name and their crazy label artwork. It is They're really They're obviously cool. very artistic folk, aren't Quite. they? Quite. I believe so. Great stuff. Um, right, let's give this a go. In, in my mind, it was like a... It's, it smelled of Muscovado sugar and Belgian double, but with a little cheeky bit of sour. It was very it. rich, wasn't it? Ooh. It's big, isn't it? Oh, it's so big. It reminds me of... Um, De Dollar, one of my favourite mm. breweries in the world, the Belgian brewery De Dollar, which means the Mad Brewers, they make almost mixed fermentation in that he's not quite sure what yeast he's putting in, just his house yeast, that just give it a totally unique flavour. Or at least it was unique till I smelt this. Yeah. <laughs> and now there's two of them. Ugh. That's very good. And it's just luxuriant. It's like it's... Mm. Kind of like roasty Coca-Cola, mm. but then with a slice of lemon in it. Mm. And then, I guess it's the depth from that sugar, just a treacly kind of thing going on. It's yeah. just spellbinding. It's got a little bit of, a little bit of like, like there's someone's put a tiny little bit of port in there as well mm. for me. It's got that kind of richness of port. Or, or yeah, rum or port kind of vibe. Rum yeah. and cola. Toasty. Oh, that's good. We're just, yeah, Plummy. just huffing, puffing and saying random words. That's oh. usually a good oh. sign. Every beer. So different, yep. so amazing so yeah. far. There, there is a small theme going on, which is mixed fermentation, yeah. which I think is my big tip for this year. We're going to get a little bit more sense of place, a little bit yep. more sense of, of uniqueness coming mm. into brewing as not everyone's using the same yeast, the same hops. Do you think that's just where the, people's palates are developing? Or do you think it's, it's, it's a great way of um, brewers kind of owning stuff a bit more isn't it like the tail wild yeah, like you can got, achieve stuff in certain places and... we've got two and a half thousand breweries in the uk now yeah finding a point of difference is getting harder and yeah. harder and developing your own house yeast it, whether it's mixed fermentation or whether it's a single strain and you're still mm. making ipa but having that point of difference is getting more and more important and yeah. when we traveled america and we spoke to people one of the things they always talked about was the uniqueness of their yeast like whether it was alchemist or whether it was oxbow you know these two guys doing very different things but that's true. It all came down to the yeast. That's how they set themselves apart because everything else you have to buy from outside. Um, and in Scotland, that, that theory about mixed fermentation that I have is particularly true. So you've got Fierce Beer. They've just started releasing theirs. You've obviously got Overworks, which was a little bit ahead of, of those guys. And then you've got Fine Ales, who have mm. been around for a long time making Jarl. But now uh, they've just started doing mixed fermentation stuff. So you've got uh, Fierce, Fine, Brewdog, uh, and Vault City, who we'll get on into in a minute. All yeah. Scottish mixed fermentation brewers. Strong. Strong. Right. The year so, of the year of Scottish independent yeasts. Nearly topical. <laughs> oh, stay off <laughs> stay off politics. Oh. So they're finally calling this their origin series. Uh, this is a Brett Forward Saison. Brewed, so you're gonna love this crowbarring I'm doing, uh, in collaboration with Duration. Ooh. Now, if Duration ring a bell, uh, we featured them many years ago as our top tip for it might have been 2017. Hmm. Their brewery took a long time to build. Mm. They were um, brewing collaborations all around the country in the lead up, uh, and then the brewery took two years to build. They now have their brewery and they've started releasing beer, yeah. but they're now about and we're making delicious beer, and this is a collab with them. Awesome. So, yeah, this, this is a Brett Saison from, uh, from Scotland. Oh, that is a Brett Saison. Woo! Hello. 
Yeah, they're not messing around. That, that, I've got to be honest, that smells like straight up Lambic out of the barrel. That is funky. Yeah. Ooh. It's quite, it's, it's quite sensible. Really sensible. <laughs> really sensible, like light and yogurty. It's got a little hint of bread, but it's it's mostly a kind of lemon yogurt kind of vibe. Um, carbonation is a little bit low as well. Yeah. Which I'm not sure I'm in love with. When when you have bread involved, I'm quite keen on, unless there's lots of residual sugar left to make it a, a kind of cider-esque mm. kind of drink. I want a bit of aromatics to pop yes. when I'm drinking something bretty. But it's a really lovely, light, clean beer. And... I'm kind of amazed at the level of Brett on the nose. It's really, the Brett's really gone to town and chewed up everything. And yeah. you're left with this really light lemony Saison. It's very, it's nice. very it's quite delicate. Mm. So just to check, Johnny, this is still the Craft Beer Channel, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, there's a very good reason the beer is not packaged in clear glass, and that's because uh, UV light destroys hop compounds. Yeah. And it's a process called skunking, and it makes your beer taste like, well, sniffing a skunk. Um, they don't need to do that with this beer because it has no hops in it. <laughs> Mind blown. No Your hops. Palette's about to be blown as well. <laughs> so this is Vault City Brewing. Do you remember when the milkman used to deliver juice in the same bottles as the milk? Yeah, yeah. And you it get like a pint like of uh, orange juice or whatever. Yeah. Could you get apple juice as well? I always just remember oh, orange so. juice, but maybe it was just we, we, we were never included on the milkman's round. Why not? Because of I don't know, we used to go around to the shops do something. And, and buy. Yeah, I think so. Marked for no milk <laughs> for death. No yeah. milk for you, yeah. Evans. Is we were bad. Yeah. Um, so this is a, a chili and mango sour. Jesus. I fucking hate chili beer, but I love Vault City, so I'm willing to give it a go. And I love, I love, I love uh, Orange Fanta. So that's true. I'm not sure it's going to be. It looks exactly like, like an Orange Fanta. Fanta Fanta. <laughs> was an invention of the Coca-Cola company during World War II, I believe. Uh, so they could still sell to Nazi Germany, I believe. I hope I'm not getting this wrong. Because Coca-Cola was too Coca -Cola American. Coca-Cola was way too American. So they came up with the idea of Fanta as a brand. Um, when I had Fanta bottle, it, it was huge in, in Nazi Germany. It was vaguely orange, but apparently they used to just put all kinds of different vegetable and fruit matter in it. And it was like an orangey drink during wartime. And they still love orange, like uh, Paulana, the, yeah. the big brewery. They make Spezi, which is a Coca-Cola and orange juice blend. They so go. they still love an orange orange. Coca-Cola and orange juice blend? Yes, it's really good on a hangover. Because it's orange yeah. juice and okay. it's caffeine. Right, so, ton of mango. Uh, I think they said chipotle as well, so there should be some smoke. I can smell a bit of... Maybe some smoke. I feel like I can smell the chilies, Johnny. I'm scared. Savoriness. The fact they've called it Inferno doesn't fill me with confidence, but it smells... Is this the first time nice. for you? Yeah. It's definitely the first time for me. Do you remember the... Um, what was the name of the beer we had on Jamie Oliver's channel? Instant Regret, it uh -huh. was called, and uh -huh. it was a 1000 Scoville beer. <laughs> and I, I remember saying, it hurts when I everything, and then I think I passed out. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Ooh. Okay. It's a tingle on the tongue. It's peppery. It's not like crazy. Yeah. It's going down the Defin now, Definite peppery. chipotle vibes. Definite smoky. Yeah. Smoky chili and less sweetness than the nose would imply. So yeah. it's well fermented out, even though it's super viscous. Could you cellar it? Because it, uh, what, would it, what, would it, what would it taste like if you drank this in a year? Because it's all really feels like. I wouldn't necessarily like, sell that. I mean, there's there's not a lot of sweetness there, so it's no, eating not a lot through of sugar a lot of stuff. to work with. Um, I'm also sh not sure how long you should keep mango juice. <laughs> What's well, essentially mango juice? Yeah, it's definitely it's pretty thick, isn't it? You yeah. can see all the kind of um, smoothie vibes, the, flu the fluctuations going on in there. Yeah, um, I got to be honest, I don't love that. But if you watch our content from London Craft Beer Festival, where we drank lots of their other beers, oh, we they're great. absolutely love them. Amazing guys, yeah. Yeah. So if you if you love chilies and mangoes uh, and smoothies, this is for you. If you don't, Vault City is still very worth a look. 2020, Johnny. Mm. We're in the future now. The future seems to be sort of an agrarian 
farmyard <laughs> society. We're somehow. preparing for them. We all live in for, communes. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. we've got four mixed firm out of the five. Yeah. Um, which is very exciting. British mixed firm is what we're saying, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's going to be the big... The big thing that we're going to learn this year, that the UK is great at making mixed fermentation mm. beer. Uh, and we're also going to do another feature on British spontaneous brewing because we've now got uh, Fine have their own spontaneous, Brewdog, Wild Beer Co, uh, Burning Sky. Um, so many guys are doing this. This goes on. Now. So it's very exciting to see what literally Britain tastes like through spontaneous brewing. Um, we'd love to know your thoughts. We'd also like to apologise to some breweries that didn't quite make the cut. Uh, if you go onto Untapped and look at the best breweries for 2019, uh, there's some so many new entries, actually. So big shout out to all those guys uh, that didn't make the cut but are probably making great stuff. Dead End Brew Machine would probably might be my... Sorry, you didn't quite make it. So watch out for those guys. Let us know who you are falling in love with in your country or your part of the world. And we will see you next week for more January-based triannuary dry January content. <laughs>